continue now on chapter 12, uh, Marketing uh, Channels Delivering Customer Value. And uh, in chapter 12, we're talking about supply chain and value delivery network, the nature and importance of marketing channels, channel behavior and organization, channel design decisions, channel management decisions, marketing logistics and supply chain management. In this chapter, the main concern is how can we get our products from our manufacturing facility to the customer. So we have, if we produce Sony uh, TVs, uh, we, how we make sure customers can buy Sony. If we make uh, TVs for LG, how we make customers get this uh, TV. If we are making this uh, Samsung, how can we make sure customers will find this Samsung? Not only get the product, but also, you know, everything that has to do with the logistics from the supply chain to the demand chain to uh, from the raw material all the way to the customer use it. And also maybe we want to think about how the customer will dispose it. Do you see? And uh, so that's what we call by supply and demand chain. And then how important these? Do you think Al-Haydari role is important too for Sony? Yes. Do you think LG can survive without a Sudani promoting for LG? Do you think that uh, uh, this is important decisions you need to do before you select or hire a distributor? Yes. Uh, do you think, uh, we talked about in our last class about uh, Pepsi distribution. They start from Bukshan factory that has the license of Pepsi to Al Gharasi who is licensed to distribute and have the delivery trucks to Al Huda supermarket that has the coolers that are set for Pepsi and maybe managed by Pepsi uh, supervisors to make sure customers when they go to the supermarket, they can easily grab that seven up and buy it and go. And also you think about the logistics and transportation and uh, all of the other intermediaries. So that's what we'll discuss in this chapter. Uh, we have here some concepts to make sure we understand. Upstream, it includes, uh, when we talk about upstream, we're talking about uh, raw material. All the way to what? To the product. So anyone, uh, anyone who do supply, components, parts, information, finance, to create a product or service, okay? So that's the upstream. The downstream, on the other hand, it includes marketing channels that will look towards the customer. So here, from the product that, uh, from the product until the consumer. So here, raw material, you get it all the way to product, product here to consumer, okay? Uh, supply chain, that's how you make and sell, and demand changes how you sense and respond. So supply chain, it starts from the raw material all the way you make a product in the factory and the factory is able to produce supply. Demand is when you listen to the customer, okay? So customers, they start to say need, I need this product. So uh, they respond to companies, marketing activities, and then the companies start to take the resources and activities in order to create a customer value, okay? Because guys okay with supply and demand? A value delivery network is everyone involved. For example, if we're selling Sony and we go to mass for advertising in order to make an advertisement for Sony, then mass is part of the value delivery network. So delivery network includes everything with the firm suppliers, distributors, and ultimately customers who will partner with each other to improve performance of this entire system. So anyone who helps to make this product available to the end customer is part of the value delivery network. Intermediaries is everyone is called intermediary. Those people, are we, are people who offer producers greater efficiency in making goods available to target markets through their contracts, uh, contacts, experience, specialization, scale of operations, intermediaries usually offer the firm more than it can achieve on its own. This is the key word. Why do you have to have an intermediary? Because they can achieve more with, than what you can do. For example, do you want? Do you think Sony they want Al Haidari to work in Yemen here and uh, provide uh, support? Yes. They want Al Haidari. If they, they can't do it by themselves, right? They need to have Al Haidari because Al Haidari will give them more than what they can achieve on their own. 
So from an economic view, intermediaries, they transform the assortment of products into assortments wanted by consumers, and channel members add value by bridging the major time, place, position gaps. So I want Sony, Sony is in Japan. Everyone between here and Japan is intermediaries, and everyone provides help and support to make it available. Uh, sometimes you want to get distributors. Distributors are great. Why are they great? The reason they are great is because they help more than a manufacturer to reach more than one customer. And at the same time, uh, instead of a manufacturer have to go through all of these channels, then we can just go through a distributor. You guys are okay, the value of a distributor? Um, and distributors, they do a lot of things. What do the distributors do? If you think about it, you know, you go to Al-Haydari. What does Al-Haydari provide you? Haydari provides you with information as a customer. And Haydari take my information and my questions and requests and send it back to Sony, right? So they provide information medium. They provide promotions. You know, remember in Ramadan promotion, you go to Al-Haydari. Talk about contact, right? You know, you want to know what are the new rules or new regulations, what laws against, what are some of the PlayStation games that are allowed in the country, that are not allowed in the country. So they will have the contacts inside there to make sure the Haidari will help both ways. Uh, they may also do matching. You know, if I go there and I want this special camera that I will use for my special new TV channel, and Haidari salespeople will be able to tell me, hey, this model is better in this wise. This model is better in that wise. So here they're matching what I want with what product Sony provides. Sometimes they help with the negotiation, right? They negotiate on behalf of Sony with the customer and they negotiate Sony on behalf of the customer, right? So let's say there is a problem with a the product, then Sony will go to, al Haidari will go to Sony and say, hey, look, customer says this and you need to change. And then they will negotiate. Uh, Sony says uh, we have this new product. They will take it to the customer and negotiate in case of any disputes or any, uh, or just day-to-day uh, -day business. They also do physical distribution. You know, Al Haidari will actually go take it, carry it, maybe deliver it to your home. You know, sometimes their employee may come mount it on the place. They also do financing. Remember. You know, uh, if you go and you buy TV from Al Haidari, uh, is Sony already paid for that, or they get the money after you as a consumer buy it? Okay. You know, sometimes they will be after, sometimes they will be before. So Haidari will pay Sony, get the TVs, and then take these TVs and go to the customer and pay and sell them to the customer and they get paid after the customer pays. Do you see? So it depends on what is the agreement, but sometimes they do that part of financing. At least they take the money from the customer and make it available to the company, do you see? So they will do all of the collection in one place and one big payment for. And they also take risk. What happens if a Sony inventory burn? Who's responsible? You know, if I'm Al Haidari and I have 100 uh, PC, you know, uh, screens of Sony inside my inventory and they're burnt, who's responsible? Haidari maybe is taking the responsibility, whether they're paying the insurance policy themselves or, yeah. you know, they're keeping a guard there, but probably they're taking a big risk. So the, all of these are making those distributors important. Some producers, they go directly with the customer. And this is when we, what we call these uh, intermediaries, where companies don't want to have intermediaries. Some producers, they can work with retailers, and the retailer will work with the customer. And sometimes, like an, like an, maybe here, like a company here, the producer, they deal with wholesalers who deal with retailers to consumers. So there are different levels. The same thing here in the business sector. You guys remember business sector versus the business to business? So business to a business, sometimes through a business distributor, sometimes through manufacturer representatives or a sales branch to another distributor. The number of channel members, they're connected by the type of flow. Sometimes you have a physical ownership, payment, information, and, uh, and promotion flow. Let's look how that works. Um, 
you need to look into you know maybe Sony products they come do they come from Sony Japan or maybe sometimes they come from Sony Kuala Lumpur so the physical flow it will come from Kuala Lumpur the ownership maybe it will has to go through directs from Sony Japan direct to Haidari but maybe the payment it doesn't go direct maybe it goes through Dubai office sometimes there's an information flow if you have questions you don't go through the main office you go through the Europe information center sometimes there's a new promotion this promotion maybe comes from Saudi because Saudi they do the promotions for Saudi and Yemen do you see so here you need to see what type of uh, uh, channel and how it works uh, marketing channels consist of the firms that have partners with the common good for each member playing a specialized role and a channel conflict happens between those members uh, there are two types of conflicts there's horizontal and vertical which one do you want us to start with the vertical or horizontal let's start with the vertical here uh, let's see vertical example is what we call this conventional distribution system where it consists of one or more independent reproducers and wholesalers and retailers and each seek to maximize this is the problem people love themselves people like to maximize their own profits and there is a little control over the other members and no formal means for assigning roles and resolving conflicts do you guys remember when you go to this uh, did you guys see that big truck that says Pepsi on it when you open this Pepsi truck what do you expect to see inside Pepsi, Pepsi right this is normal if I am Pepsi general manager I am G Pepsi CEO and I see Pepsi walking on the street will I be happy Yes. I'll be happy they're working and then when I see this Pepsi walking and if I go I open it and I find Talib al -Rabir, oh. I will be shocked right why did you put who put Talib al -Rabir inside my truck how many people will be surprised to see Ali Rabi? Oh, see, you can see here you're you, you know you will not be maybe surprised because you know that the people who do Pepsi are also the people who are doing a Rabi distribution, and because those people they want to maximize their own profits, then they carry Pepsi and they carry Ali Rabi. Do you see? So that's an example of a conflict where Pepsi is conflicting with the distributor. Do you see that's a vertical conflict? Let me take another example where if you go and you see, uh, remember the Pepsi cooler? If you go to a small shop and you see Pepsi cooler, will you be surprised to see inside there uh, yogurt or Zabadi? Will you be surprised? No, it's okay. It's okay. Right? Probably the small shop owner, you know, they have some Zavadi there or yogurt. And they said, okay, I will keep it here and I will sell it and I will make the money. They don't care this is Pepsi's and Pepsi should make money also. Do you see? So that's another example of a conflict. Pepsi general big boss is conflict with the small supermarket because the supermarket is not using this refrigerator or cooler for the purpose of Pepsi, which is making Pepsi only available. Did you see that red ball? They have their own sm small coolers. And they make it look like a uh, red ball. And they don't want anything except red ball to be there. And what happens if they go and they find inside the small cooler for red ball anything else? They take it away immediately. So that becomes a big source of conflict okay so uh, so let's see so companies decided let's do a vertical marketing system what is this vertical marketing system that's when you provide a channel leadership and consists of the producers who will sell and retail acting as a unified we want them to work as unified system so they so what they want to do is they want to have very good distribution so what do they do? They do this corporate marketing system, contractual and administrative. Let's look at this contractual. Anyone know this place? This is Zara. What Zara do is, uh, Zara decided that we don't want to have distributors. We don't want to have, uh, they decided every single store of Zara in the world is owned by Zara. 
So they make their own store and they hire their own people and they have their inventory by themselves. The systems are there and everything is there. Why do they do that? Because their strategies is we want to give people fashion and we want every two weeks to give customers a completely new fashion. Do you like when you go shopping for clothes and you go today, you go tomorrow, you go after two weeks, three weeks, and it's the same clothes? You don't like that. And they said, we also don't want that. Every week they have something new. And when I say something new, I mean if you go after a month, you will not know anything that you have seen last month. Everything is gone. Maybe they don't have a big selection, but they have enough selection that every time you go, there is something new. And this becomes very good in terms of attracting new customers and getting customers to come back. People like to shop in Zara. Why? Because there's something new to see. And if I buy something from Zara today, two weeks, no one can have the same thing. If you like it, you can't buy it anymore. You probably will not see it anymore because Zara has already sold it and they will not bring it back now. So you need to go to Zara, get something new. So people like this fashion. And for them, they wanted to make it 100% owned and controlled from the top all the way to the bottom. Because if they start to have small middle people, those middle people, they will not be available. They will not make it available. They will not order the new. They will not you know, take the old out. They will not do the way Zara wants it. Are you guys okay with this? Yes. We'll talk more about more tricks and uh, distribution next class.